Look how cool my shirt is. I'm so on brand today. Hello, hello, how are you? My name is Echo, just in case you're new here. There are a few things in this world that I feel very passionately about. I don't care if you use a Mac or a PC. I don't care if you say GIF or GIF, but I feel very strongly about color. Do you know what the primary colors are? I will even make it multiple choice for you. Take your time. If you picked C, you were lied to as a child. To be fair, this is a little bit of a trick question because they're kind of all primary colors. To a degree. From a very young age, we are told that blue, yellow, and red are the primary colors, and that you can mix those colors together to make any other colors. All of these are lies. Let's discuss why. First, I'm going to do that thing that you're not supposed to do when you're writing essays, and explain what the definition of a primary color is. Primary colors. Any group of colors from which all other colors can be obtained by mixing. If you can manage to get any of these colors from these colors, you are a magician, my friend. The real primary and secondary colors are red, blue, green, cyan, magenta, and yellow. Depending on whether or not you're talking about additive or subtractive color, but we're not going to get into that now. Those six colors are so important that it makes me angry that we don't teach children about those six colors. We teach children a system of color that is founded on misinformation that has been handed down for hundreds of years. We scientifically know how color works now. We don't have to continue using this color model. So when we are children and our teachers bust out those fancy three colors of paint and they tell you that you can mix those colors together to make any other color, which is a lie, they are teaching you a form of subtractive color. The real primary colors they should be teaching you about are cyan, magenta, and yellow. These are the three most important colors you can know about as an artist. They are the true primary colors. This is why printers use CMYK in their printing, because they're very technical machines and they have to use the actual primary colors to make every color that you can print. In this system, the secondary colors are blue, red, and green. Two of the colors that they tell us are primary colors you can make by mixing paints. Let's have an example. Okay, welcome to Echo's color theory class. So over here is the red, blue, and yellow that we're told are the primary colors. And then over here we have the yellow, magenta, and cyan, which Arteza has so lovingly called sky blue, which are the actual primary colors. So in subtractive color, blue is actually a secondary color. And to demonstrate that, we're going to be mixing cyan and magenta. I'm just going to be using my fingers for this. You can make blue by mixing cyan and magenta. So there is no way that blue is a primary color. You can actually do the same thing with red by mixing yellow and magenta. I feel like this is kind of hard to see on camera, but this is clearly a shade of red. Blue and red are not primary colors. Now, unfortunately, because I'm working in acrylic, these colors aren't as vivid as I want them to be, so I'm gonna also show you an example using alcohol-based markers. So here I have a yellow marker, a magenta marker, and a red marker for control. So the first thing we're gonna do is make a control area where you can just see what the red alcohol-based marker looks like. So that is a pretty pure red spot. And then we're gonna go in with a magenta. And then I'm gonna do a small control area right here so you can see what it looks like alone. And then we're gonna use this Art Nouveau 405 yellow. Put one spot here for control. And now, if you watch when I color this over with yellow, it becomes an incredibly vivid red. Honestly, I would say that this mixed red is even more vivid than the red marker itself. If red was a primary color, you would not be able to make it by mixing other colors. When you are working with paint or markers or any kind of subtractive color, red is not a primary color because you can make it by mixing magenta and yellow. So because we're taught the wrong primary colors, most people would say that you mix blue and yellow to make green. But what people don't realize is that because you're mixing a primary and secondary color, you're actually getting a desaturated form of green when you could be getting a much more vivid green by mixing two primary colors. So contrary to popular belief, although yellow and blue make a green, it's actually yellow and cyan that make green. I think deep down we all know that the way that we're taught color is wrong because so many people think that cyan and blue are the same color when they are vastly different hues. It's like saying that red and magenta are the same color or yellow and green. We aren't given the color vocabulary that we need as children to be able to properly understand color. In fact, we actively make it more 
more difficult to learn color when we're older. Instead of being taught about magenta, we're taught about purple. Instead of being taught about cyan, we're taught about orange. You have to understand the difference between cyan and blue, and you need to learn the words cyan and magenta if you ever want to properly understand color. Children aren't intentionally being lied to. Teachers are just passing down the same misinformation that was handed to them when they were children. And honestly, that system is probably going to continue for the next hundred years. There are two main types of color wheels. There is the traditional triadic color wheel, and then there is the Munsell color wheel. Science. Tradition. How is anyone supposed to have faith in the public education system when we can't even teach kids the primary colors? This is science. This is a social construct. The only reason that people think that color theory is so complicated is because you're taught the wrong primary colors in grade school. You're never gonna get anywhere thinking this is blue. It's very important to know the difference between cyan and blue because one of them is a secondary color and one of them is a primary color, depending on whether you're talking about objects or light. But when referring to paint, cyan is a primary color. Oh, I'm getting sad, bro. And then there's purple. Purple is a lie. I mean, it literally doesn't exist. It's a color your brain makes up. That's why purple is so rare in nature, because it's not real. This is a concept that I try to explain to people and then I completely fall on my face because I can't words for garbage, which is a shirt now, by the way, Rip that merch. When I'm trying to explain this very complicated concept to my friends, I will usually just say purple is a lie because purple is the closest word in their color vocabulary to what I'm talking about, which is magenta. John, that color's been dead for 40 years. So believe it or not, the color wheel is kind of like a human construct to begin with because at its most basic form, color is just wavelengths of light. And there's a small section of wavelengths that we can perceive with the naked eye. That is the visible spectrum. The visible spectrum of light starts with these long wavelengths in the infrared and then get to tighter wavelengths in the ultraviolet. Color is a spectrum, not a wheel. It's a line, not a circle. If you continue in the ultraviolet direction, then you get gamma rays and x-rays. If you continue in the infrared direction, you get radio waves. It's all just a bunch of waves. Science. What that means is that you can actually assign a number to every color in the visible spectrum except for magenta. Magenta is a color that doesn't have a wavelength. But if magenta doesn't have its own wavelength, how can I see it? Brain math. We're gonna go back to grade school and talk about your eyes now. As you may or may not know, your eyeballs have three cones, three color receptors that are tuned to specific parts on the visible spectrum. Red, blue, and green. RGB, like a computer screen. This is also why televisions and older computer monitors are made with red, blue, and green pixels. It's eyeball tricks. So let's just say you're walking down the street and you see a lemon tree and you're like, oh my, those lemons are yellow. You don't have any yellow receptors in your eye, so what's going on? The yellow light that that lemon is shining off into your eyes is causing some of your red cones to fire and some of your green cones to fire. Since both of those cones are firing, your brain thinks it must be something between them. It's yellow. Your brain, look at it doing automatic math. However, you can also trick your brain into thinking something is yellow by making your red and green cones fire intentionally. And that's actually what your computer screen is doing to you right now. If you're looking at this on an older computer model and you get really close, you'll see that all of the pixels in this yellow are just red and green. There's no yellow light coming off of your computer right now, but your eyes think it's yellow because both of your red and green cones are firing. So now let's talk about where magenta comes from. If something makes your green and red cones go off, your brain will think it's something between that, which is yellow. If your green and blue cones fire, your brain will say, oh, it's something between that, it must be cyan. But when your blue and red cones fire and your brain goes, it must be something between that, the thing that's between that is green and the green cones aren't firing, so it can't be green and your brain for the sake of helping you navigate the world, makes up magenta. Magenta is the only color that doesn't have its own wavelength. It's an illusion created by the combination of red and blue wavelengths. It's all a lie, man. Your brain is a liar. The main reason that I'm making this video is because I feel like people need to know about cyan and magenta. They are literally primary colors, and no one knows that. That hurts my soul as an artist. This is something that should be taught in kindergarten. I feel like the triadic color wheel is the imperial system of color. It's not based in science, it's not based in fact or reason. Why are there 12 inches in a foot? Why are there three feet in a yard? Who knows? That's the way it's always been. The only reason that we use it is because we're used to it, because we're comfortable with it, because everything in the world around us is catered to this system. Even if it's not based in science and the science is readily available, we're comfortable with the idea that blue and yellow make green, that Roy G. Biv means something and that the sky is blue. Cyan.
more between cyan and blue, isn't it? Also, on the note of Roy G. Biv, that's like three primary colors, a secondary color, and three transition colors, right? Roy G. No, it's Roy, so it's three of those. Yeah, three transition colors. I'm still going to use the word purple to refer to magenta and blue to refer to cyan when I need to get my point across because I know that those are the words that people will understand. I guess I just hate the fact that I have to call magenta purple and cyan sky blue when they're such important colors that everyone should have been taught about in kindergarten. If you take nothing else from this video, take these words. Add them to your color vocabulary because they are two of the three primary colors. You deserve to have these words in your vocabulary. Angry. ANGRY! I think I've officially run out of emotions, so I'm gonna go. You get a thousand awesome points for making it all the way to the end of this video. Go read a Joseph Albers book or something, and hopefully I will see you later. Goodbye! The triadic color wheel is garbage! It's lies! Sorry if this video comes off as kind of angry. I'm just kind of angry is all. Cool, we're done here.